So Patricia Ehi has joined me today to talk about a study which was reported at the conference. The presentation at the conference was called Classroom Promotion of Oral Language, CPOL, I presume is how you yes, say it, yes. a cluster randomised controlled trial of a school-based intervention to improve children's literacy outcomes at grade three, oral language and mental health. That's a mouthful <laughs> and a big ask. So Trisha, would you like to to walk us through the results of yeah, this study. Sure. So I guess before I jump into the results, it's probably worth talking about the three really kind of policy pillars that CPOL is based on. So that's um, the importance of the early years in terms of children's ongoing trajectories through their school, um, school life. It's based on the fact that we know teachers and the quality of teaching is one of the most important pieces of children's development whilst they're in classrooms and in school. And it's also based on that really important thing which I'm sure everybody already understands, but that language to literacy continuum and the interrelationship between those two things. So CPOL was a study that had uh, 72 schools in it that was across um, our Victorian Department of Education schools and the Catholic Education Commission of Victoria schools. Um, schools were randomised into either a, um, the intervention arm or the control arm. And the intervention was a, a, was a tier one, um, if we think about response to intervention. So it was a four days of professional learning for teachers in the early years. So in Victoria, we call them our foundation to year one teachers, um, but it's the first two years of children's schooling. Um, and they were able to engage with the professional learning um, and with each other during those days. We also included what we called CPOL support workers. Um, one was a very experienced literacy teacher, the other was a speech pathologist, very experienced in the Victorian Department of Education. And they supported the schools to take back the knowledge and the information they were getting in the intervention into their schools. What we were really interested in was whether or not teachers' knowledge changed um, as, by being a part of CPOL, whether or not their practice changed in the classroom. And then finally, and perhaps most um, importantly in terms of it being sort of our end game is whether or not the students themselves their outcomes changed. So if I go to the teacher knowledge piece first, um, we did manage to see short to midterm changes in teachers knowledge and when we when we were thinking about knowledge we're talking about teachers explicit understanding of concepts and so there were a number of different concepts we got them um, to, to report on or to, to complete a questionnaire basically. So certainly their, um, their phonological knowledge um, was improved through the intervention and broadly across the whole knowledge space their explicit knowledge improved. We've yet to look specifically at the teacher practice data um, but we did um, have a primary outcome for these children at grade three NAPLAN. And unfortunately, what we found <laughs> was that we couldn't see um, a change in the students' outcomes based on the intervention group and the control group. We did that as um, is appropriate in a randomised control trial. We did that in terms of an intention to treat um, analysis first, which means everybody that was in the intervention and everybody in the control is part of the analysis. And that didn't show us any different outcomes. We then went to what's referred to as a per protocol. So um, did the teachers actually attend all of the professional learning? Were the teachers engaged in the professional learning? Um, sometimes that gives you a, a more narrower and better look at what the students' outcomes might be, but unfortunately they didn't change either. So we've got a lot of teacher practice data that we want to go back and look at. That's teachers' um, language in the classroom that they're using, and we'll be interested to, to look at that. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of transcripts, a lot of analysis to do with that, and we're, we're building to be able to, to look at that, but we haven't just yet. 
it's an unfortunate fact, I guess, that research doesn't always give us the answers we think we're going to get. But sometimes it's the impetus for a change in direction of research or for considering other factors. I wondered what your thoughts are mm. on that. Well, as you can imagine, Corey, we've thought a lot about that sure. as a research team. and. Um, I should actually have acknowledged at the beginning of this that there are a lot of um, researchers involved in this. So Pam Snow is part of it. Um, Professor Sharon Goldfield from the Centre for Community Child Health are, are also leading this work. Um, we have, have thought a lot about it and we think that there are a few things that we need to focus on going forward. Um, First of all, when we start thinking about any professional changing their practice, that's a really difficult thing to do. And I, I often, when I'm talking about this work um, to speech pathologists, say, you know, if you needed to change an aspect of your own work, with, with whether it's with children or in schools, that actually takes a concerted effort and quite a period of time before that change becomes part of your um, normal practice. And so when we're doing this work with teachers, we have to acknowledge that changing the way we do things is, is hard work and long work. And so I think there are some questions we have about the support that teachers have in the school um, environment to actually be able to, to make those changes. Um, and I think we need to acknowledge that each school is different. Schools are complex places with lots of personalities, obviously lots of students, and sometimes um, applying exactly the same thing to each school may not necessarily be the most effective thing um, to be doing. You know, you, you do need the evidence of what you want to take into the school, but once you've done that, we suspect there's probably some flexibility there in terms of how you work in each school to do that. So we're thinking a lot about, I guess, what would be called implementation science. So the science of thinking about how you go about implementing evidence-based programs in different environments. And we're also thinking a lot about tier two. So it's possible that in fact, the teachers have improved their knowledge. They do have better understanding of language in the classroom, but that may not be enough to change the trajectories of the students that we're really trying to build their skills in. Um, and so going forward, we're thinking that it's, it's important to keep the tier one in place for the whole classroom, but maybe we also need to be looking at tier two in terms of that small group intervention. Interesting, and of course, we don't see the individual results, the results for individual children in a randomised control okay. trial. Um, so there may be some changes hidden within your results. There, there could be. Um, and I think the, the importance of um, randomised control trials is that they actually do tell us about what's required to take some of our work to scale. Um, that it's, it's important that we see our, um, the, the, the more um, building of evidence, that work needs to occur so that we understand what, um, what interventions work and don't work. But then when we want to think about what does that mean if we were trying to assist all teachers or all students in schools, it's important to see where the challenges and the, um, the enablers and the barriers are when we try and do that. And that's where randomised control trials give us that, that level of, um, I guess, uh, evidence that builds on the more basic, we know this intervention works, but what happens when we try and do it? Um, mm. Fascinating stuff. I'm sure everybody's going to look forward to hearing more results from this study, which was a very large study mm -hmm. and a very complex study, it seems to me. Um, it, we were trying to do a lot of things, and um, I think we've we've been able to provide answers, perhaps not the ones that we um, would have liked to get. But as you said before, it's when you get results like this, it gives you a lot of food for thought about what to do next.